here are some consequences of continuity. Our first, polynomials are going to be continuous on the entire real line. So we had an evaluation rule for getting the limit of a polynomial. That means you just take your point, stick it in the polynomial, that's your limit. Well, that's also the definition of continuity. So polynomials get continuous everywhere. Rational functions. So I'm going to take a polynomial, put it over another polynomial. OK, our rule for that was also evaluation. You would have a limit except where the bottom function, so if I have my polynomials as p over q, when q is equal to 0, we get discontinuities. We've seen enough examples by now to see that those discontinuities could be vertical asymptotes or they could be removable. So you have to actually take a look at the function you're actually using to decide whether you can fix them or not. Anyway, for a rational function, continuous everywhere except where your bottom function equals 0. OK, something not quite 1 and 2. For instance, we could take square root of x. This is going to be continuous where it's defined. So it's going to be x bigger than or equal to 0. So you notice if I'm away from 0, we're just looking at regular continuity. If I go to 0, though, because we're not defined on the negative numbers, I only have a one-sided limit at 0. So we definitely need to have um, this notion of continuity from the right only. So here, we would just say that's continuous everywhere where it's defined. So it's x bigger than or equal to 0. All right, where does that leave us? Well, we have two big theorems for when we're continuous on a closed interval. So let's take a look at these. So first I'm going to assume I have my function f. We're continuous on the closed interval from a to b. My first theorem, the min-max theorem, is going to say f attains its maximum and its minimum on the interval a, b. So now, what do I mean by maximum or minimum? Well, the idea is going to be, OK, you draw the graph of your function. You're going to get something like this. There's going to be a point where if you take the biggest y value and the biggest, the smallest y value that your function takes, we could actually find points that get us to those values. Okay, there's a little bit of subtlety there, but the point is, if, for instance, here, we have the max of 2 over 3 times radical 3 for x cubed minus x on minus 1 to 1, I can actually find a point that's going to map me up to that value there. And that's going to be at minus 1 over radical 3. Same for the minimum. Again, subtle. Let's see why it could fail if I let go of the closed interval property. If I take x squared minus 1 on minus 2 to 2, you'll see I draw it in. We're going to be open at these endpoints. The point's not going to be defined there since I have an open interval. We hit the minimum for sure at 0. But the problem is, if I try to get to these points here where our value is going to be equal to 3, there's going to be no point inside the interval that's going to get me to 3. If I wanted to get to 3, I'd have to actually use the endpoints minus 2 or 2. So there's no point in this interval that gets me the maximum. So that's the subtlety that our max min theorem is fishing out. It's saying that those points for your max and mins, you can actually hit them. OK, another big one which we'll use a lot, intermediate value theorem. What's this say? This says my function has positive value on one endpoint, negative value on the other endpoint. Somewhere in between, we've got to hit 0. So for instance, if I say f on endpoint A is bigger than or equal to 0, f on endpoint B is less than or equal to 0, there's an x0 in my closed interval such that f of x0 is equal to 0. So the idea is this. We draw on our point at A. We draw on our point at B. How do you get there from there? Well, if I don't cross the x-axis and I don't lift my pencil, I'm going to have a problem. So the idea is, because we have this pencil test, I have to hit this axis somewhere as I go across. So downside of this theorem is that it doesn't tell you how to actually get the point where you cross at. It just says that it's there somewhere. 